Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, broadcasting live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Tears and wailing as governor of Bonu State visits internally displaced persons in Gumbi and Adamawa states. Tan holds rally in Southwest calls on President Jonathan to run for a second term as Governor Amechi challenges the army on peaceful polls in 2015. Police lament attack on training college in Goza, Bonu State, says 35 officers are still missing. And German Chancellor Angela Merkel recommends tightening of the Ukraine-Russian border as part of measures to end Ukraine violence. All our top stories can be found on our website channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. But do visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. And when you've done that, we also urge you to please interact with the Channels Eyewitness feature on our Android, iOS and Windows 8 platforms. If you have pictures or videos to share with us, tap the application on your device, swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu, and follow the instructions. A raid on a tailoring shop belonging to a Catholic church in Kano by, has been, by suspected thieves appears to be spreading fear among the residents. It was learned that the attackers last night swooped on the shop located in the Sabungari area of the city and carted away dresses used by Reverend Sisters. The Department of State Security has urged Nigerians to be more alert with regards to users of such peculiar attires. In a statement signed by the DSS spokesperson Marilyn Ogar, the agency explained that with the recent trend of female suicide bombers in the country, the theft of the dresses raises concern about the possibility of militants using same to perpetrate acts of terror. And as part of efforts to provide electricity to rural areas in the state, the Kogi state government has begun the distribution of 160 transformers to 300 communities. The transformers were provided in fulfillment of a promise made by Governor Idris Wada during his governorship campaign. 160 electricity generating transformers waiting to be distributed to communities across Kogi state. It's the first batch of 300 transformers to be delivered to the communities. <laughs> Governor Idris Wada arrives at the old office of the State Civil Service Commission to commission the equipment before they are issued out. For the benefit of the various communities across the 21 local governments of Kogi State and to the glory of God Almighty. Rural electrification is believed to accelerate rural development. This seems to be the priority of the transformational agenda of the state government. And we believe that provision of electricity has so many derivative uh, improvements in the lives of our people. And so it's very important that we provide electricity to communities. While these transformers are expected to be put to use soon, Another issue is how to tackle overestimated billing from distribution companies. The present billing system is not favorable to the consumers of electricity in Kogi State. We ask you, Your Excellency, that you should personally con make contact with Abuja Electricity Distribution Company to immediately deploy prepaid meters to all the electricity consumers in Koji State. I want to promise you that I will take this up officially with them. So under our executive intervention program, as the commissioner said, I promise that before I leave, I will work hard to make sure that 300 communities are connected to the national system. Meanwhile, the government has revealed that the second batch of the 300 transformers will be available in a week's time. 
Now, if you're a parent who intends to give out your child to, under the pretext of giving him or her a better life, you may need to have a rethink. This is because more children are being enslaved and are being trafficked to other countries to take up odd jobs which may endanger them. Well, this was emphasized at an empowerment event organized by the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons and Other Related Matters, NAPTIP in Lagos, for some rescued victims. Our correspondent, Chris Lems, reports. It is the way the game is played. She is only 16, from one of the southwestern states, rescued while in transit to Burkina Faso. She was promised a lifeline by a friend, only to be betrayed into the hands of an enemy. Call it a case of man seeing humanity to man, and you won't be wrong. The time that I'm living with some people, there is one woman that is there. He asked me, maybe I will do address our work. I say yes. And she gave me to one boy that the boy will come go to the place that I will do the work. It looks like a never ending circle, prevalent wherever poverty is rife. The unsuspecting and undiscerning victim is lured by the offering of a glimpse of hope. She is 22 from the eastern part of the country. She thought she had a job as a bartender, but was shoved into prostitution by a captor. One of my girlfriend introduced me to one girl. So it's girl that introduced me to one woman. So the woman brought a callous rich Ikeja. So for that Ikeja, the woman, so the boy can call the boy for phone. So let her do my use bike, come pick us. We did soon. So I want to reach the place. So I don't know send her the position. Then they do. I think send her be a para. Often left bewildered and traumatized, they are sometimes sentenced to a lifetime of stigmatization. Unfortunately, some of them used to come out with uh, HIV positive and some other disease condition. But those that are not HIV positive, we give them the necessary treatment that they need to get while they are in the shelter. And some of them also come with pregnancy. We need to take care of their, of their routine treatment. Human trafficking is considered a huge money spinner. The traffickers lurk around, waiting for the next victim. The effects are felt by all in one way or the other. For a lady who is trafficked, who is expected to pay about 50,000 euro, if you convert 60,000 euro into Nigerian money, it's about 12 million naira. So quick means how many years is this girl going to work selling herself to make up 12 million? And so whatever disease contacted by this victim during these years, she's brought back to the society and she becomes an agent of dispersal of seed. Some of these traffickers have international counterpart, as was revealed recently, when a syndicate was smashed in the UK. And on the local front, several cases of baby factories have been reported. All those children that are being forced into trafficking, 90% of the cases 90 or over 90 percent of the cases, their parents know about it. The danger of human trafficking cannot be overemphasized, which is why the efforts by NAPTIP in taming this tide is worth commending. <laughs> On this occasion, some of the rescued victims have been empowered after a period of training in various fields such as hairdressing and catering. <laughs> Business will be set up for them and monitored to ensure these empowerment tools are not sold. A few of the beneficiaries have messages for other youth. They should face their work and learn what they want to learn. Anybody, even man or woman, to come to ask them whether they want to travel. First of all, may they ask them which type of work then they do. No need to live in denial. The menace of human trafficking is here and can only be curbed when all hands are on deck providing information to relevant agencies and empowering the youth. Chris Elams for Channels Television News. Now the call for the president to run for a second term is gaining popularity. Judging by this loud, by a large crowd of supporters at the Southwest Rally of the Transformation Ambassadors of Nigeria in Ibadan today, Present at the rally were some leaders of the People's Democratic Party, some serving ministers, as well as top government officials, 
including the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Ayim Pius Ayim. Various speakers at the event applauded the, ev the efforts of the President in nation building. A mammoth crowd at the Liberty Stadium in Ibadan, venue of the Southwest Rally, organized by the Transformation Ambassadors of Nigeria. In our midst. This is an indication of the efforts being put into the clamor to hand Mr. President a second term ticket in office. The atmosphere is charged as chieftains of the People's Democratic Party, top government functionaries arrive at the venue. For the wonderful things that the President is doing for us. Without much ado, it's straight to business of the day. The migrants of Transformation Ambassadors of Nigeria, TAN, as a non governmental organization, was born out of a deeply rooted patriotism designed to promote good governance. Our mission is to assist in the transformation of the second hundred years of the Nigerian state. One after the other, representatives of the party from the various states in the zone reel out reasons President Jonathan deserves a second term in office. If I am the pathfinder, Conferred by the honor of FIFA on me, the pathfinder of our progenitor, the Odudua. I am therefore asking us that we should come out in millions to render support to a very rare Nigerian. I am going to ask you one pertinent question, and I want a resounding answer. With all I have mentioned, would you want him to go back for second term? Yeah. If you take cassava in Nigeria today, we have distributed 59 million stems of cassava plants to all farmers all across Southwest, Southeast, South South. The president kept his word. This is the place of Coco House. Through the president, we have distributed 39 million seedlings of high-yielding cocoa seedlings for farmers all across. president. The climax of the day is the presentation of signatures of those in favor of the campaign from the zone. On behalf of the entire Southwest, I am pleased to announce a total signature collected of 1.8 million. Well, I am under pressure to announce that Southwest had done better than Southwest. <laughs> Having successfully concluded the rallies in the southeast and southwestern parts of the country, the group is now set to storm other zones in continuation of its drive to drum up support for the president. Staying in the southwest, goods worth millions of naira have been intercepted by officers of the Nigeria Customs Service Federal Operations Unit Zone A, Lagos State. The deputy comptroller in charge of the unit. Osman Turaki attributed this to a tip-off that three coaches of train were fully laden with contraband textile materials traveling from Kano to Lagos. Mr. Turaki condemned the use of the recently revived rail transport system to perpetrate this economic crime. If you look at the way a manner this syndrome was made, you see the federal government has spent a lot of money in reviving the railway operation over the years. And uh, they did it for the benefit of all of us. Economically, if you look at it, it reduces the workload on our roads that are also under rehabilitation. Now, for roads now to pay back the government in a positive way, some very few individuals you can see are taking that advantage, you know, in using it as a as a smuggling route or means. Therefore, it's a clear message. No matter how you change your tactics or, or routes, we are with you, we are looking at you, and we continue 
pursue you until when you get you. And definitely, when we get you and you have found one thing, you must fit the laws of the law. Still in the southwest, the Ogun state government has ordered the immediate and indefinite closure of the state-owned university, the Olabisi Onobanjo University, Agoiwe. The government also asked all parents whose wards are students of the university to immediately call them to order as the government will not tolerate any act that will disturb the peace being enjoyed by the people of the state. The government explained in a statement signed by the secretary to the state government, Taiwo Adeolua, that the decision to shut the university was taken in the overall interest of peace and order. It added that the students have continued to issue threats while rejecting all entreaties and concessions made by the government on their various demands concerning the recently announced reduction in school fees. The government had on August the 12th, after a meeting with the leadership of the Students' Union in the 10 state-owned tertiary institutions, heads of the institutions and government representatives, announced a reduction in school fees by as much as 61%. Away from the southeast to the from the southwest rather to the southeast, residents of Oka, the Anambra state capital, may soon put behind them the challenge they face moving from the state capital. Now this is because construction of flyover bridges with three road interchange in the Oka axis of the Inugu Onicha Expressway has begun in earnest. The residents are pleased with this development, and the state governor, Willie Obiano, has pledged his commitment to ensure that the project is completed in record time. This used to be a Roma junction with a landmark tower of map of Anambra sitting right in the middle as vehicles move round about it. But presently, it's no longer there as excavation of the roundabout for the construction of a 5 billion Nara flyover and road interchange has begun. The presence of the earth moving machine and several workers on site clearly shows this. The state governor, Willie Obiano, is on site to inspect it. So he's confirming that this will be ready in one year's time. I reassured him that we are not going to owe him one cover because we want him to deliver this on time. The same exercise is ongoing at Amobia Junction and the projects are expected to go on simultaneously at the three project sites, Aroma, Quata and Amobia. This landmark tower has to go to ensure smooth operations. So we are seeing the difference, the changes. Uh, the new governor is really working, at least changing the environment, making a good, a good junction. At least people will know that Okana is a town. Yeah, it's, it's very good. It's, it's a nice improvement. We stop the uh, traffic, hold up, vehicle going anywhere and come back. No disturbance. While creating a new face of a functional government in Anambra State, achieving their set developmental goals with people-oriented administrative policies in terms of security and empowerment appears to be their watchword. Still ahead on the news at 10, what Nigeria must do to sustain progress in human development comes into focus. Please join us again.